In this tutorial, I will show you all the steps to use Notion for BIM standards and documentation. It is crucial that knowledge doesn't stay stuck in your head. Your knowledge should be written down, structured and made available to everyone on your team. In the old days, people used PDF for BIM standards, but now we have much better ways to do so. With Notion, you can easily embed videos, images, GIFs, file and make everything searchable for all users. All right, and let's get started. First, create your free Notion account, and then you'll be asked, uh, what you want to do in this case we'll select for work and then you're going to work with your team although you could use by your own if you just want to create personal notes there are some pre-made templates you can use in this case we'll use other and start from scratch i can start inviting teammates for now we'll skip it and click on take me to notion and again uh, we'll start with the free tier which is well enough for our current needs and you can also skip downloading the desktop app. So you can see right now I have my uh, personal workspace HQ. So the first thing I would probably rename this, I can uh, click here on team space setting and rename this to, let's say uh, BIM Pure BIM Standards. All right, so that would be the name of uh, the team space. Now let's click a brand new page. I will click on the plus icon and you have, again, several templates. We'll select empty page for now and i will call this bim pure revit template guide so we'll just put all of the notes on how to use our revit template in there i highly recommend that you add uh, an emoji you can also use custom icon i like to use the emojis typically i like to use the triangle the ruler for the template stuff and there you go so your initial page is created next you can start to create headers so if you use the, the hashtag, the pound symbol, uh, once and enter spacebar, this will create heading number one. Or if you uh, enter the pound symbol twice and hit spacebar, this will be heading two. Same thing for heading number three. So this way we could start uh, writing down some of the headers that we want to include in our template guide. So that would be a project startup, project browser organization. Then we could use a uh, header number three for some of these sub elements such as uh, views, uh, schedules and so on. So you'll notice that for the headers, the numbering is not automatic. That's something you'll have to do manually. Okay, now let's add some text. You can just copy paste from your old document or uh, start typing. So welcome to the BIM Pure template. That should be enough for now. And then you can start using the slash. This is very powerful. So if I type slash, you can see a list of commands and tools that you can use. In this case, we want to use a numbered list. So I will select these and you can also see the shortcuts for all of these tools. So I could select numbered list from there, or I could simply type one uh, dot, one comma and start typing my list. So. This would be the default rivet phase in our template. There are also other kind of formatting you can use. For example, there's uh, the, the quote. You could say uh, demolition is not a phase, just to put extra emphasis on some elements. To make your document more fun to look at, you can use colors for the background of headers. So let's say that I select this specific header, click on the dots over here, select a color, background color, and let's say this one, I use orange. So this is something I could set up uh, for all the headers. Next, something that I love about Notion is how easy it is to paste images and GIFs. So let's say I am inside of Revit. In this case, I am using a great tool that is quite cheap, about $30, $40 a year called Snagit, which allows me to quickly take screen captures of elements on my screen. And what I like about it, I can simply copy and paste with Control C and let me go back to the page in control v to just paste the image i don't even have to save the image somewhere i can just paste it directly on the notion page i also enjoy using snagit to capture gifs so in this case i can record a very short video and let's say that i move this wall for example and then stop the video and then inside of snagit i can quickly convert to a gif and then i can copy the gif go to notion and paste it over here somewhere and you can see this animated gif inside of the notion page uh, which is a fun and interactive way for users to learn something else that is great about notion are the integrations and the embed so if i type slash 
and embed, you can see all the tools I can embed and use directly inside of the Notion page. And you can even directly paste, let's say a video from YouTube. And when I paste the YouTube link, I can select embed video. And you can see automatically the thumbnail will appear. So that's great for public videos. What about if you have a private video that you want to embed there as well? In this case, I recommend using Loom, which is a tool, web-based tool to quickly capture your screen and record videos. Uh, let's say that I paste a Zoom link of a video. Once again, I can select Embed Loom. And this is a video that I can use, but keep this one private. You can also embed files directly on your Notion page. In this case, I'll simply drag and drop a Revit family from my desktop into the page. And you can see it becomes automatically embedded and users can download a family. For free users, you can upload up to five megabytes. Although you should be careful about keeping a single source of truth. So if you have a local server or the cloud with all your families included, make sure to not duplicate the content. You can also add link to your Google Drive or other server information. Another tool that I enjoy using to make the page more fun are Calouts. So I type slash Calouts, select this one, and you can see this is a text with an emoji and colored emphasis. So in this case, I can pick another emoji. It could be the sirens, the fire, or the warning sign. Let's pick this one. And I could say, for example, never download families from BIM object. If you want more BIM, AI, and AC tech videos, please subscribe to our channel. BIM Pure includes everything to make BIM less painful at your firm. Get self-paced courses from beginners to advanced. Download our pro template for Revit to keep your projects organized. Use our Revit doors and windows collection for powerful, flexible, and intuitive families. Watch standalone lessons on emerging technology at the intersection of BIM and AI. Attend live masterclasses to get direct help from BIM experts. Our new BIM Manager Journey Live course with Slantis includes strategy on how to be an efficient BIM manager, including advanced Notion setup. Enroll now and unlock all content at bimpure.com. If at some point your main page becomes too big, that's when you can start using wiki-like features and embedding pages inside of this main one. So let's say that I want to add a new page specifically for family naming convention. I will type slash a page, select this first option and a new page will be created. Again, I can name this family naming convention. And then I could add an icon to represent uh, families. Which one should I use? I can search for it. Let's see, this is good. And now we can have a look at your sidebar and you can see we have our main uh, page right here, but you can click on the arrow to reveal the sub pages included in this main one. You can see family naming convention and you could even have more sub pages, although you should try to keep it relatively simple. And you can even see the importance of having good emojis and titles to your page. Back to the family naming convention. In this case, it would be good to use a table to indicate to users how to name families. So I can type slash table, pick the first option. And in this one, it could be a family category. And in this case, it could be prefix. And then we can drag the table to remove this column. Then I could make these elements bold. And then I could start naming the family categories. Let's say windows, the prefix in this case might be win or uh, the doors would be D-O-R and so on. Then you can add extra rows by clicking here. And let's say this is furniture and the prefix would be FRM. I think you get the idea. And back to the main page, well, first you can see that we now have a link to go to the family naming convention. Uh, but something else to make uh, the page easier to navigate, go at the very top, type slash again, search for table, but this time we'll pick the table of contents. What's really nice about table of contents, it is automatically generated based on the headers and you can easily click on one of these to move to the correct section on the page. Now let's explore some graphical options. If you go at the very top right of the screen, you can click on the dots and then you can switch to using different kind of text based on your preference. And then you can also select this option that makes the text smaller or you could also select full width if you want uh, all the information to take the full width of the page. And by the way, if you find that some of the images are too big, you can 
uh, resize them this way and use the alignment tool for this case, for example, make it align on to the left side. Uh, typically, I don't like using this full width. It's easier to read pages with a shorter column width. Okay, let's say that you are happy with what you've created so far and you're ready to share with your teammates. At the top of your screen, you will see share. Click on that. You can start to type the email address of your colleagues and friends to invite them to this page. And this is the important part. They don't even need to have a paid account. They will be invited and they can stay on a free account to access the page content. You can also customize the kind of access you want to give between full access, edit, comment, or view only. Something else you can do with your Notion page is to share it publicly. So again, if you click on share, and go to publish on the top right and click on publish right here. And then it will automatically generate a link. So let's say that I open this in your browser window. Well, then you can access the whole page even if you don't have a Notion account. Another fun feature is the ability to export to PDF. Let's say that you want to keep an archive of this page. I click on the dots and select export. We'll select PDF as the export format. Then you have a few more options. Uh, so for now, let's just click on export. And now our PDF is ready. You can see it has clickable links and includes all the information that was on the Notion page. And now we'll try something different. We'll use the powerful database feature inside of Notion to create a Q&A page for BIM managers where users can ask questions and you keep a trace of all the questions that have been asked so we can refer next time someone asks the same question. So we'll click here on the plus sign and this time, instead of empty page, we'll select empty database. And we'll call this BIM and Revit uh, Q&A. And then you can see this is similar to the previous table feature we had, but this is way more powerful. And you can start adding more properties. For example, we could add uh, a status option. We could also add uh, a person. And then we could add a date where the question has been asked. So let's say that I start creating a new entry and this is how to fix Revit Concrete visibility. And then the status would be uh, in progress. The person, well, for now I can select myself. And uh, let's say that this question was asked last week. Then I would also recommend setting a proper emoji. So let's say this makes sense. And then you can click here to add another question. So let's say this one how to load a family from content catalog. Uh, this one would be not started. And let's say uh, that the date is today. And then you can make some of these fields more precise on clicking of them. So for example, instead of name, this would be question. And instead of person, it would be who answers the question. If you have multiple people in your team that can answer the questions. And let's set an emoji to this one as well. And how, here's the nice part. You can click here to open the side peak. And let's say that you want to write the answer to how to fix the concrete visibility. And uh, like we'll select the slab and unhide it. And this is similar to the page feature. You can quickly create uh, a screenshot and paste it inside of the Notion page. And let's say that I'm happy with this. I could change the status to done. And then later on, I can refer to this entry in the database if someone else has the same question. Okay, now we have our template guide page and we have the database for the questions, but it would be nice to have a nice hub to be used as the home page for our BIM space. So I can click here to add a new empty page and call this the home hub, for example. And uh, what emoji should I use? This one and say, welcome to BIM Pure Notion Hub. And then what's nice about this, I can start to add links to other pages, even if they already exist. So for example, I could use slash table, table view, I can select this one and select a link to existing data source here at the bottom and pick my BIM and Revit Q&A. And as you see, we have the same BIM and Revit Q&A. It is a view though, it's not the original place where this database is stored. And I can display any way I want. If I go to settings, I could change the layout to something else. It could be a board, it could be a timeline, it could be a gallery, it could be a list. So I can decide which one makes the most sense. In this case, list 
uh, looks pretty nice, although I could add more of these properties to make visible. So let's check them out. And then I could add my template standard. So let's say I had a header, uh, BIM Revit template guide, and then I can select link and use link to page. Then I can search for my template page. And this way it's linked to it. So your home hub can use links and views of other elements in your Notion setup. One of Notion's most awesome feature are the search capabilities, which you will find at the top left corner of the screen or by using control P. And what's nice, this is looking through all of the pages in database. So let's say a user has a question about concrete. They can type that and they will see the answer that you've entered in the BIM and Revit Q&A database. And finally, all users can leave comments uh, to give more information, ask for clarification or anything you want. The most common comment that I receive about using Notion is that people are stuck on the Microsoft ecosystem. So a couple of years ago, Microsoft released Loop, which is basically a cheap Notion clone. It's not as good as Notion, but if you want to do uh, pages and guides, it's good enough. So you should check it out. To get beyond Notion basics, make sure to check out the live masterclass about Notion we had with Nico Martinez of Slantis. He showcases Slantis' powerful Notion setup, where to manage projects, onboard new employees, document standards, and collaborate with one another. The replay is available on the Bimpure membership.